Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's talk and event. Um, my name is Ailsa Kepi, and I'm from pleasureforhealth.com. I coach and I also work somatically with uh, people through trauma and finding pleasure in their lives. So today uh, we're doing a talk on how to deal with children and our, all of our feelings about our children that sometimes get caught up in this. <clears throat> I was kind of prompted to do this particular topic by a couple of you in the group that mentioned um, having, you know, difficulty not feeling resentful about your kids, not feeling, res you know, not feeling angry that you'd been left to having to bring up this child that you may or may not have even wanted, that may or may not have been with someone that you uh, had a good relationship with. Um, quite often, we don't stay together with the, the father of our children if that was our abusive relationship or one of our abusive relationships and we manage to get out of it, we're still left with this uh, baggage, if you will, and I don't, and I would never say that my kids are baggage, but they do come along with the choices that we've made in the past. And, you know, it's uh, worth looking at what our feelings are about that. Because it's not a simple, it's not a simple, I love my children all the time, aren't they wonderful angels, I'm so glad I had them. Although those feelings are definitely there. What do we do with the other feelings when they wake you up 10 times in the night and you don't, you know, it's harder to find a job without having uh, childcare. It's harder for you to um, get back on track because sometimes you're so busy. And conversely, sometimes our kids are a reason that we keep going. You know, we get up every day because they're there and they're looking to us for support and encouragement and life. And if they're young or even if they're older, you know, they can be the reason that we are like, okay, I have to, you know, I have to keep going. I know in my case, when I started this business and different things were really challenging, you know, I said to my kids, is it worth me spending money on this? Is it worth me investing a lot of time in this? I could be saving up all my extra money to help you. And without question, all four of my kids were so supportive. And, you know, they all said, we want you to do what, what makes you happy. And we're willing to make these sacrifices with you. And, you know, it touched my heart at that point. And my kids are older, so they can, they, they are starting to come around. But we have a choice about how we feel about this. And it's not as easy as just saying, okay, I'm going to get rid of all my bad feelings about my kids and all my resentment. This is about realizing that we have a choice in life. So I just wanted to start by saying, you know, we're all born to be responsive beings. We're born as little babies. We respond to our environment. When we're warm and safe and cuddled, we are happy when we're hungry or cold or we have a dirty diaper, we're, we're sad, we're upset, we're, we're, you know, frustrated, angry, all those things come in. We don't feel good. And the task of maturing and actually becoming an adult and taking responsibility is this ability to actually start being response able, not just reactive. And re by reactive, I mean, if it snows and you're like, oh, I'm gonna shovel the driveway and then it's sunny and you're like, oh, what a wonderful day. And then it's, you know, it rains and it's like, oh, it's such a dreary day and then it's, you know, you see the first flower and you're like, oh, you know, that's great. You're responding. But when your whole life is just that reactive kind of response to things that are outside you, you're very much at the mercy of what happens outside you, which is, you know, it's a difficult way to live. You're going to be up and down a lot. And a lot of us um, are super sensitive. That is one of the traits that often, you know, we end up in abusive relationships. We're usually very sensitive and very aware of everything around us. And if we react to all of those things, you know, he's upset or angry, we're, we're uh, guarded or, 
whatever, our kid cries, we're upset, we think we're horrible parents, or we're angry because they're crying in the middle of our cooking dinner. You know, if we're always just reactive to that, our life is going to be really difficult and we're not going to be able to kind of move out of that type of that type of up and down yo-yo kind of feeling and you can't ever really feel kind of in control of yourself. So in my understanding of what I've worked with, with different mystical teachers, different ways, you know, yoga and meditation and all of these things, they all have truths about them. It's about whether we can really embody them. But one thing, you know, to learn is to really respond. We don't want to lose our responsiveness. We don't want to just shut ourselves up and not respond to anything around us. I mean, pretty much that's depression, right? When you're just not able to respond. And that's not going to be helpful either. We want to be able to respond. Response able, but when we, we choose how we're going to respond. So we have enough awareness in ourselves that we are able to choose how we respond and we're not just initially reacting not knowing what what will come out so you know as babies were born to to kind of respond like this and as parents one of our tasks one of our main tasks is to help our children learn to have this kind of self-awareness and self-control so they're not just reactive they don't you know when they're a baby it's fine if they cry and they're hungry as they get older, we learn to realize we're hungry, but maybe we can wait for a little bit. We can ask, we can say, is dinner going to be in, you know, it's 20 minutes, we can wait. Um, so it's that kind of self-control in a way is what we're learning as we grow older. And so as parents, we want to be modeling this kind of self-control to our kids. And a lot of times if we get stuck in this you know kind of victim like well such and such happened to me and now i'm in such a bad mood and i can't deal and you know <clears throat> my car broke down and now everything's gone to pot what are what we're teaching our kids is that we have no control over our lives that everything around us just happens to us and you know, if it's a good thing, then we're good. And if it's a bad thing, we're, we're not good. And this is not really teaching our children the responsibility to take, make choices in their own life and to be able to have awareness that they have some control over how they're going to respond to things in their life. So it's really important, not only for us to heal for our own sake, not to have this up and down yo-yo kind of life, but also to model to our children, what does it mean to be a really mature adult? It means to have self-control. It means, you know, not to just react, be reactive to whatever goes on around us. And, you know, this takes training, this takes some work. And, you know, one thing I also wanted to bring up is that it's not something that just being responsible for yourself does not always mean you have to do everything by yourself. This is a really important distinction. So when you think, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for my life. I'm going to be, you know, take control. I'm going to do everything. But then you, it's easy to go over to the, well, I don't need anyone help. I'll just do it all myself. I can't re rely on anyone else. It, it requires a lot of people to help support each other. We are social beings. And, you know, to raise children requires help and support, too. And we can't possibly imagine that it's, it's something that we can just do on our own. I had four children. They were all within five years. You know, there were things I had to adapt and people I had to call in to help me to do that. It wasn't an easy task to do on my own. And even if I'm taking responsibility, which took me a long time, by the way, there were many years in there where I was pretty, there were days when I was very resentful about having children. For me though, this realization of knowing that I wanted to empower other people to live their best version of themselves, and I was feeling resentful that my kids were taking me away from my work. And you know, one day I realized, but they could be my work too. You know, I can help them take responsibility and be empowered adults. And that is part of my work too. And who said that's, you know, at the end of the day, 
does it matter which people I helped? You know, I could have helped my four children or my one kid to become an amazing adult could be just as effective as going out and having a job or having money or doing all, you know, helping people or, you know, all the things that I hear a lot of you wanting to do, go out and help people to serve other women. These are great things and, and definitely you want to do that. But serving your own, you know, helping your own child to realize how to mature into their own response ability, ability to respond the way they choose is actually helping them grow up too. So we don't want to pass on the sense of victimhood, which is so prevalent in our culture. It's not something that, you know, there's any blame or judgment about. It's endemic in our culture that there's kind of a victim culture. We're all victims of the government. We're victims of poor air quality. We're victims of, you know, the lack of, you know, loving beings in the world, whatever you want to label it. We create that victim mentality. And so we really want to work to have this kind of responsibility where we're, we're not letting that continue, at least for ourselves and for our children. And that's where we have the most impact. Um, I was going to say, too, that I realized that, you know, one of the, <laughs> this was actually a story from this morning, my aha moment. So a couple of weeks ago, I do have, uh, I do work in a clinic as well. I see clients. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got, I was away. As some of you know, I was traveling and doing some teaching. So I wasn't working that much. And I still got this uh, larger paycheck because your paycheck is from, you know, the month before. And I, and I was traveling. I was like, oh, this is nice. I have this, you know, nice little paycheck this time. And I was feeling pretty happy about that. Now, yesterday I got my paycheck and because it was for the period that I was away, I didn't get paid that much. And I was really, I was like, oh, you know, I didn't get paid that much. And I've been working really hard the last two or three weeks. So what came to me was that, you know, I really let that affect my mood for a few minutes. I was like really happy when I got paid and I hadn't been working that much. And then I was really upset when I didn't get paid much and I have been working really hard. I was like, interesting that I would expect to be rewarded right away for what I'm doing. And it kind of made me think about this talk and about all of you and about parenting. Parenting is such a, 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 a opportunity to realize that you're investing a lot of time and energy, especially when they're young and you don't necessarily see the paycheck right away that, that proves that. And you may never see the paycheck for being a great parent. And it doesn't always match how much work you're putting in and what you're getting out of it. And so, you know, I kind of was like, well, the paycheck's just a paycheck. And, you know, yeah, as long as I can pay the bills or whatever, that's great. But, you know, realizing that what we offer and what we're doing and how we're working is just about how we feel about stuff. It's not necessarily about what we get back from it. And again, this is just being able to be, you know, take ownership of what, who we are in the world and what we're doing. Sometimes it seems like we're, we're working really hard and we may not get a lot back. Sometimes we're not doing a lot and lots of people give us stuff. So, you know, it's, it's not out there that creates how we feel. We decide how we feel and then we create, you know, how we move forward. It's not always going to make out there beautiful, but we have a choice about that. I actually created uh, an introductory course. I don't know if some of you uh, I've posted it in here. It's on my website, pleasureforhealth.com. But it's actually dealing with this radical responsibility idea of really coming to terms with how do we be responsible? And so this isn't really a lecture about, oh, you have to take responsibility for your kids and never feel angry. Of course, you're going to feel angry. Of course, you're going to feel resentful. Of course, you're going to feel guilty or, you know, um, <clears throat> every time you look at your kid, if they look like your ex who was abusive, you're, you're going to be reminded of all that. It's your responsibility to deal with your feelings about that and really help your children to have the best opportunity to grow into uh, adults that aren't victims, that aren't abusers. You know, the victim and the abuser and the 
the, the rescuer are all related. We just, we perpetuate that system if we continue doing that. Getting the help you need for you, getting the support you need for you is imperative in helping yourself to move beyond this kind of victimhood triangle that most of our culture is, is stuck in. And this is exactly why I work with people like you need support, you need help, we need to work together to create a different mindset and to have a different feeling about it. I mean, ultimately, all our children, you know, they are our responsibility to help and model a new way of being, whether that's our children or other children or the future, you know, of the planet. Um, we actually do all take responsibility for all of that. So, you know, taking responsibility as an individual and then also accepting help and support where you need it. It's a delicate balance. But it's really the ultimate maturing process. You become a mature adult as you go through this process. And yes, there is a lot of grown up children walking around in the world, and we, ha we have a choice about that too. How do we want to show up? Do we want to show our kids what it looks like to really mature and to take responsibility? And maybe we ended up with a kid we didn't want, and <clears throat> there they are. You have a choice about how you're going to work with that. So, you know, there's always a choice. My mom, <laughs> bless her heart, she was pretty harsh at a certain point, but she said to me when I was really bitching about having all these kids and being on my own, and, you know, I had to live with my parents for a while too back in the day. And she said to me, you know, you have a choice. You could drop your kids off at a shelter. Uh, you could go to a shelter, you could drop your kids off and say, I can't look after them and leave. Or you can choose to step up and be their mom and be the best mom that they could have. And, you know, I was like, I can't believe my mom said that to me. And, you know, I went through all of that. But now looking back, I can see that, you know, in a way she was right. And maybe I did need that, that kind of slap in the face kind of reality of, you know what, you're right, I could choose to walk away from my kids. Lots of parents do, unfortunately, walk away, they don't, can't handle it, they don't want to handle it, they go off and do something else, or, you know, for whatever reason, no judgment, if you have to, you know, you just can't, you just can't do it. Um, not really making a judgment about that, but for myself, you know, it was a choice, and when I was like, well, I can't leave my kids, they're my children, and I could never live with myself if I did that, that was the start of me saying, you know what? Yeah, I'm actually choosing. And the bad days and the good days, they're gonna come and go, and you know, but I'm choosing to do this. And so over time, I know that I make that choice every day. And you know, Another thing that I just wanted to kind of finally put in there is that a lot of people that I speak to have, you know, they have anger and resentment, of course, built up from whatever abusive types of relationships you've been in. And it's easy to just have that overflow into your parenting. So you take your anger and your resentment out on your kids, like, you know, you shout at them because they make too much noise in the morning or they spill their cereal or whatever it is. What I would say is to look really carefully at yourself in that, in that scenario, or a little bit later when you're feeling like you can look at it, is the anger and resentment that you're projecting out on your kids actually covering up fear? I would say that quite often we get angry and we lash out at whoever's around, which unfortunately is often our kids, because we're afraid. We're afraid of being alone. We're afraid we're not going to be able to pay the rent this month. We're afraid that we're not enough. We're afraid that nobody will ever love us for who we are. Whatever the fear is, that fear that's underlying it is actually part of the reason we lash out and we get angry and resentful. Again, if you can create a practice, even if it's just five minutes, you know, in the shower, you would breathe or whatever, you want to be aware that you are you have a chance to shape these little lives. You have a chance to take 
this being from, you know, from being a, a baby to being a mature adult. So are you going to help them be a mature, response able, responsible adult, or are you going to create more grown up children and yourself included? And this is something I, I, I ask myself every day. It's not, we never get to a perfect place. Uh, you know, I'm just going to kind of close with this uh, saying by somebody, one of my teachers, it's like, be like the leopard and own your spots. You know, that your imperfections are your perfection and just own them. Take responsibility. You know what? I'm angry. I'm afraid. You know, I don't have to put that on you. And our children are such vulnerable beings when they're young that they really do pick up on all of this. A lot of us grew up in households where our parents were not able to be responsible for their own feelings, their own actions. And we took uh, the brunt of that on. And that's a lot of times what's passed on. We want to say that's enough. It's enough passing on trauma. It's enough passing on abuse you have the opportunity now in your lifetime to decide that that's enough to get the support and help you need to be responsible for yourself so that you don't pass on and keep this trauma and abuse going. You know, it's a big thing up in our world today. Do we continue to pass on racial trauma? Do we continue to pass on cultural trauma? You know, and do we pass on trauma in our families? Of course, if we don't become aware of it and we don't take responsibility and make different choices. So this kind of started off as a little topic about what if I just can't stand my kids around all the time to, you know, how do we actually become mature adults and how do we model that for the next generation? So it's a big, you know, it's a little topic that becomes a big topic when you look at it. And I hope that this has given you some things to think about at least. And always, you know, I have this intro course, it's $97. You know, it's not a huge investment. It gives you some ideas about how to start taking responsibility, how to make choices for yourself. Um, this is well worth your time to invest in. Um, you just go to my website, www.pleasureforhealth.com. On there, it's the Radical Responsibility course. And I would start there. If you're thinking about what I've been saying today, and you're not sure if you're ready to move forward or how to move forward, that intro course will give you some really great groundwork for really starting to make those choices to move forward in your life. So, you know, I would recommend that you take a look at that and decide that it's going to stop with you. It's not going to keep passing on. And I, you know, I so love that many of you are parents or parents of four-legged beings or just people that care about the future of our world we're all parents in that sense um, so you know we all have this responsibility to model as as much as we can how to become mature adults so hopefully that gives you a lot to think about for today and again if you have topics you'd like to discuss on these Wednesday talks message me put the put the topics in the group you know, um, tag me so that I make sure I see them. And I, I look forward to being in touch with any of you uh, at any time through the group. All right, have a wonderful Wednesday.